On today's episode, I only spent about $37 in a quick shopping trip to Goodwill. I got tons of great stuff that had lots of potential. Some of it was already ready to go and others I decided to upcycle into something new, but you're really going to like today's video. If you like watching thrift shop with me and thrift flip videos or cottage decor or French country decor, consider hitting subscribe so you can see more. We post videos every Wednesday and Sunday. Hello and welcome back to Desert DIY. If you are new here, my name is Corey. Today I'm going to take you with me to Goodwill and I'm going to be flipping every single piece that I picked up from the shopping trip in this video. So here we go. First item I'm going to show you is this really beautiful plate. It was $1.99 and it has a silvery kind of mercury glass look to it but on the back it's bright silver and I think this is going to look really nice in my kitchen. So all I have to do is clean it up and put it on a plate stand. This little plate stand that I have, I actually got from the Goodwill bins. And I think that this shiny silver plate is going to not only give it an upscale high-end look in this corner of my kitchen, but it also brings light to this dark shadowy area. I think this is something that anybody can do when it comes to decorating in an area with low light is to use some shiny reflective surfaces, especially in silver or white. The second item that I thrifted is this butter dish. It's a Ray Dunn piece that I got for $1.99. I had this before in my last house, but we sold it when we moved. So it was nice being able to pick it back up for a super low price. I know that a lot of people think that Ray Dunn is outdated or old news, but I still like it. And right now is a really good time to find it for really cheap because everybody's getting rid of it to do something new, but I love it. The third items that I picked up are these plates. They were $1.99 a piece. The back says Home Trends. It does have a chip in this one, but I thought that I could actually paint these and put them on a pedestal and create risers out of them. It has a beautiful design on it that I think will really pop with some paint. The color it is now is gorgeous. I really wish it didn't have this chip on it but it's, that's reality, so I have to make it look beautiful in order to sell these in my booth. To upcycle these, I had these cute little candle stands from buying from an auction a long time ago, just sitting and waiting in my garage for the right project. Well, I had two perfect ones and two plates, so I knew that these two pairs would go well together. I decided to flip the candle stands upside down because it was a more flat surface that would take a lot more glue and adhere better to the bottom of the plate. I also did that because I thought it looked a little bit better that way, but it doesn't matter if you want to keep yours right set up or not. It's just, I think it would be a little bit stronger. So I'm going to let those sit with E6000 on them for about two hours before I do anything to mess with them. After that, I'm going to mix up some of my own textured paint using some baking soda. This is just regular baking soda. I highly recommend buying the big bag from Costco. I think it's like $6 or $7 for a gigantic bag of it. But I'm going to pour a little bit of Waverly chalk paint in the color mineral in here a little bit at a time until it becomes a consistency that I want it to be to create a concrete effect on this cute little plate stand.
On this coat, I am just going to use the Waverly chalk paint to get rid of that opaqueness from the original layer that I did. I don't need to do any more textured layers on here because it will start getting too thick and it won't stick as well. Another thing is I've never done this on super slick surfaces, so I'll have to let you know after a while how durable these things turned out. But in order to seal it, I just put in some clear coat into the chalk paint since it did need a third coat of paint anyways. I tried to make it to where I could kind of do the third coat and the clear coat at the same time and save some of my own time. Now that these are all done, let's stage them. This is in my eat-in breakfast nook area, and I am currently priming and painting my walls in here, so ignore the terrible paint job. It's primer. But I'm going to use these $5 little wreaths that I picked up from another booth in the store that I resell things in. Five bucks is a great deal for these. I think that I probably would have spent 10 to 20 if they were new. And now I'm going to put these little chocolate bunnies in here. I got them from Hobby Lobby. They were $5.99 but 40% off. So $6, 40% off would be, what, $3.60, I think. They are adorable, and I think they're going to look really great with staging for YouTube and also staging for inside my resale booth. And I think they would look great just decorating for spring or Easter in general. Number four is this cute little faux casserole dish, like a decorative casserole dish. It was $2.99. It has a few chips along the edges, which I think I can touch up with some brown paint or maybe some stain. This I think is for decorative purposes only. It says microwave safe on the back, but I wouldn't really use this for actually eating. It's more of a pretty piece. It has a lot of crazing on the inside, like a crackly finish. And I think this would look great with a French country or farmhouse decor style, or even just traditional home decor. I'm just gonna touch up these areas using some water-based wood stain in the color Tobacco Roads by Dixie Belle. And then I will show you later on in the video how I staged this. But let's see how amazingly close in color this stain is to the, that rim brown color that it has. It turned out so good. Number five, I have this cute little laundry sign, and it's actually from Magnolia brand that you can get at Target. I paid $1.99 for it, and I think this will look great in my laundry room. The fastest way that I know to hang something lightweight up on the wall is to use some command strips. So I'm just going to use these two command strips and get this up above my laundry room door. So this would be on the wall above my door facing the laundry room.
Number six is this cute little candle stand. I think it's a candle stand because it has this pointy part, but it was $2.99. I'm gonna actually be putting a wood round on here and staining that dark because I think this would look really pretty as a pedestal. So in order to achieve the look that I'm going for here, I just need to get that wood round attached to the top of this piece. It had a brand on here, I think it says Hossley. So if you're familiar with that store or that brand, let me know, I've never personally heard of it. But I am going to apply some glue to this wood round that I got from Hobby Lobby. They're $4.99, but I got it when they were on sale. And I got a bunch of them when they were on sale. But I'm going to stain it first before I apply glue to it to get it onto that brass candle holder. Although that brass candle holder would look totally cool just holding a candle as well. Even putting like a wreath around it and then a candle, that would look amazing. But I'm using the water-based stain in Tobacco Roads again. And you have to apply this a little bit at a time or else it will look really blotchy. You can kind of see what will happen once it starts getting blotchy. Also, the lid to this was kind of clogged up. I've had this thing for many years. It has lasted me for so long so I took the lid off and I'm just using a napkin to apply this water-based stain it does not have any kind of bad smell which is why I like using this stain I can use it indoors and my super sensitive <laughs> self can go through this whole project without having any kind of allergies like I do with anything that's oil-based now I'm gonna glue it with some e6000 and here is where the struggle started <laughs> We could not get this thing to just go in there with that little stick. I had wanted to just use that stick to kind of nail it in there. So then I pre-drilled a hole and that still wasn't enough. Then I drilled a hole all the way through because I realized that that stick was actually the same thickness of the wood round. Still, it would not go and like sit flat. I applied more glue, still wouldn't sit flat. So then I put some clamps on here, hoping that the clamps would make the glue dry and keep it sitting flat and flush, and it still doesn't. You can see how wobbly it is. So now my husband is pre-drilling some holes, and then we are going to screw this in, which that wasn't even that easy, but it was the best solution because this piece is going to go up for sale in my resale booth, so I want to make sure that it is nice and sturdy and doesn't have a wobble to it. So we put some little tiny screws in here and then I went over it with some craft paint in a gold color that matched the brass of this piece. Number seven is this little vase or jar. I don't know, it was missing a lid. It was $1.99. And it is kind of in rough shape. It has these random holes that somebody tried to drill into it, but it doesn't go through. So I'm gonna do a textured finish on this, and I think it would look great with a topiary ball inside. This little ugly duckling of a piece gets the same treatment as the plate stands that I made. I thought this was even better of a concrete look than I got on the plates because it is like a planter and it looks a little bit like a boxwood planter or pot that you would see in these beautiful French country style homes that are like super wealthy people. <laughs> it looks like a miniature version of that and I think it is adorable when it is done. It took about three coats. I did the same exact process that I did for the plate stands for this little tiny pot.
Now I'm going to stage it with some little topiary balls since I did want this to look like a little topiary. I have two different topiary balls that I wanted to try. I wanted to try white because like I was saying I'm trying to brighten up this dark corner in my kitchen counter. And so I tried white first and I did like it but I felt like it just looked way too big on top. I don't know. I feel like I need maybe a, a smaller topiary ball but my smaller ones are too small. So I tried this green one and it actually looked a lot better in my opinion. Which one do you prefer? The white one or this green one? I think the green one kind of gives it more of a natural look and helps to elevate this, this area to look a little bit more high end with that beautiful high end silver plate back there. Number eight is this little milk jug. It's it's a really neat finish that it has on it. I thought it was just really unique. It's very dirty, so I have to give it a good wash. But it was only a dollar ninety nine. It's it's kind of like a crock, right? It's stone. The whole inside is finished with that brown finish. I think this would look really pretty with some white tulips inside. We gave this little crock a good scrub so it is nice and clean and it is time to add some florals. Tulips like these are pretty expensive usually. This bunch was $9.99 but I got it 40% off so I spent about $6 plus tax on it. And then with the price of the crock, I'm not looking at a huge return in my investment on this flip unless I ask a higher price point like maybe $12 to $14 for it, which I'm not sure it will sell at that price. We will see. I will let you know. But I took a little bit of trial and error getting the right length on these stems. And I also decided to take the leaves off of the stems and put them in afterwards. And I made all of these stems a lot shorter to where it was more along the lines of the same size and proportion as the crock itself. For number nine, I have this cute little watering can. It was only 99 cents, and I think it would look cute with some lavender coming out of it. My little ones really liked playing with this watering can, but now it is time to flip it and get it ready for resale for springtime. First thing I have to do is just remove the tag that's on there. I just wanted to show you that this is part of my process. I don't always show it, and I don't always remove them if they're gonna be underneath something that is glued. But look at my kids had poked a smiley face into this foam. I'm just going to cut this foam to size in here and glue it in using some E6000 glue. The next thing after that that I have to do is um, put in some florals. I got the florals that I'm going to put in here from Joanne. And do you call it Joanne or Joanne's? I swear I've been calling it Joanne's my whole life. But then when I looked it up, it's actually called Joanne with no S. What? <laughs> Am I the only one who was confused by this? They were originally $5.99 for this big bunch, but they were on sale buy one get two free. So technically it was 30% of that price. So much cheaper. And I took the little bottom piece of these florals off because I'm going to use it on my next DIY. And plus it wouldn't have worked sticking it into the foam if I didn't remove that bottom one. Another thing that I'm going to do to this is add some Spanish moss. I got this brand new bag of Spanish moss from the Goodwill bins in a different trip. But I'm going to cut it into smaller sections and hot glue it in there. And then that is all for this project.
Number 10 is this adorable little apothecary jar. It was only 99 cents, which I think was a total steal. This is gonna look really awesome. I'm not gonna tell you what I'm gonna do with this just yet because I want you to see it as I'm doing it. it may not make sense if I just explain it or it may seem not as great if I explain it first, <laughs> but here we go. This cute little jar has limitless possibilities. You could do any color that you wanted to do it in, put anything inside it that you want to. You can change it out for every season, every holiday. But I'm going to use these little pieces that I pulled off of the stems for my, from my last DIY that I just showed you and put it in here to look a little bit like an apothecary jar full of lavender herbs. They don't look exactly like lavender, but it's the same kind of feeling. Then I'm going to use this ribbon, which I got from Hobby Lobby, originally $2.99, but I got it 40% off. And I'm going to tie a cute little bow on here in the same color scheme as that lavender. Since my booth is mainly lavender color purple and brown woods and whites and some blacks, I want to keep doing a lot of my DIYs in that same color scheme. So not only will I be decorating my house cohesively, but also decorating the things in my booth cohesively and it will give it a more high-end and inviting look. Evan is this adorable little caddy. I think it is for silverware and napkins, but I'm actually going to use this in my craft room for paint brushes. It was $1.99. Really cute. Number 12 is a really versatile piece. This little tray slash basket is really popular everywhere. You can find one of these in any store pretty much. And they're usually around 12 to $20. So for me to get this at the Goodwill bins, that was a steal of a deal. I don't have the price tag on it. For some reason it must have come off. So I don't remember how much I spent for this, but I'm guessing probably around $3.99. Still, it was definitely less than what I would have paid new and it is in excellent condition. I think this one's a keeper. Number 13 is this adorable little lantern. It was only $3.99. And I love it just how it is. It had this little ball of hydrangeas inside and I'm gonna leave that because I think it looks really cute. This was definitely a score. Let's stage these last two pieces together. So this massive basket is extremely durable and in great condition. And this adorable lantern was in the same condition and a great size to put inside this basket. You can decorate these baskets in so many different ways as well. I've had a lot of people comment saying that they don't really decorate in the style that I do my flips, but that they still enjoy watching because I can explain how you can do these same sort of things in completely different styles and it still is totally awesome for different people in different ways. So this is one of those things. You could totally go boho or mid-century inside a basket like this, but for my booth and for springtime, I'm doing a little bit of a French country spring look. I think this turned out adorable and it's just showing how all my DIYs can kind of come together to be staged well in my home and also in my booth.
Number 14 and the last piece today is this empty frame. It was 99 cents and I have all those books of all those amazing botanical prints that I'm sure one of them would look really great in here and I'm excited to look through that book. Also, I found that botanical book that I showed you guys in my last video on Amazon for sale. So I'm gonna link it, it's an old book, so they're selling it used on there, and I think there's only like one or two left. So if you want it, go down to my description box and click the link to the Amazon store that I have and get it right away because it could sell any second. <laughs> You guys have been loving this book in my recent DIYs and I um, I had some people comment saying that I shouldn't tear the pages out, that I should just copy them. Well, I my copy machine is not great. I'd have to get like some super high definition copier in order for it to look legit and good. But I'm just going to tear these pages out. I found this on Amazon for I think between $20 and $30 for this book. It's not a super expensive like antique book worth millions or anything like that and what I'm doing is I'm maximizing the money that I spent on this so I spent 50 cents on this book at the Goodwill bins and I'm going to tear out pieces of it individually and and make different projects out of them I've even sold some of these pages individually by themselves and I sell them for $3.95 so if I were to just sell all the pages in this book let's say I only used a hundred of the pages in this book I would make almost four hundred dollars off of a 50 cent book so in my opinion I think it is definitely worth tearing the pages out and using the real ones because they look better in the projects than if I were to make a copy of it and use the copy plus it costs even more money to do those copies printer ink is expensive and I can't imagine how much I'd have to pay for each page to go get them copied like professionally and in a really good high quality so I'm just going to keep on tearing these pages out I'm sorry for those book lovers that are super hurt by the fact that I tear pages out but I just wanted you to understand why I do and that I have thought about it and made the decision I think is best for our business and just for my own decorating purposes and you can do the same thing i found these on amazon and they were super affordable on there and i think that they're definitely still worth the investment if you're going to be uh, flipping all those pages you can get a definitely huge return on your investment but now you can see i just cut out a cardboard backing to go on here to stabilize it in there and make it more sturdy and that is from a thread up box i buy all my clothes off thread up i am not sponsored but i do want to mention that they're a great place to get your clothes for way cheaper than buying new it's also better to buy used in this very disposable world that we have but here it looks like a beautiful little painting it reminded me so much of winnie the pooh's hundred acre woods do you get that same feeling from it? It to me just looks like you're stepping into the Winnie the Pooh books into the Hundred Acre Woods. It's a great cottage decor piece that I think is going to be a quick seller in my booth. But this is my last project for today. I did not show how I flipped the butter dish and the little holder for my paintbrushes because I feel like you guys already know what I'm going to do with them. If you want to see them, let me know. I'll show you in another video. But I only spent $36.61 on everything that I bought from this video today, which I think is amazing, a great deal, which is hard to find these days. Even at Goodwill, it's usually hard to find these prices. But let's get a good laugh at some of my outtakes. What is this, number five? <laughs> <Stop>. <laughs> oh, thanks, Piper. <laughs> Next I have this cute little, what is this watering can? Ay, ay, ay. Also, thank you all so much for watching. If you liked what you saw today, don't forget to hit subscribe down below. I post videos every Wednesday and Sunday, and I hope to see you next time. Bye.